Hi, welcome to the next unit on statics and dynamics. Today we are going to talk about forces and their symbolic representation. This is very critical to understand and many of you already know most of it. But I want to make sure that you understand my notations as well as some subtleties involving, you know, how to make sure that you don't make silly sign errors. Okay, so that's what we're going to talk about. Some of it you already know, as I said. Okay, but before we start, as I please uh, get a get your notebook, get a pen, get a calculator, and get a ruler and put it next to you. The idea is to do these calculations along with me. You cannot build muscles by watching an exercise video. You have to sit there and do it. That's how it works. Okay, so please uh, do that. Okay, have you done it? Did you get your pen, paper, and everything? Excellent. Now let's start. Okay, so. What are we talking about here? So, the fundamental point is made by dire straits very beautifully. You got to move stuff. You know, I told you that uh, mechanics is about getting things to move in the right way and being able to sustain the forces. You can see those people are trying to move refrigerators, color TVs, whatever, all over the place, right? Even if you don't move it, you have to help them move it in a safe manner. That's what uh, mechanics is about. So let's see what we mean by that. Here's, a, here's an engineering approach to how you would move something that's really large. And I'll show you how you could use some of the techniques of mechanics to do this. Right? There. Yeah. Look at how they are moving. Okay. So they talk about center of mass. That's very critical for this. And where they put their hands, everything matters. This is actually understanding of mechanics. There. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? You know, they are not struggling, they are not doing all kinds of crazy things, but I want you to understand it's really beautiful. So what is this about? Okay, so what we are about is the fact that in the real world, forces are represented by pushing, pulling, dragging, bending, twisting, all these kinds of things are the loads. Okay. Now, if you your fundamental question that you are trying to answer is this is the load too much that's a strength question in order to do that you have to draw the forces combining them and all that stuff so now we are into virtual world which is we are going to represent these drawings in terms of vectors so starts out real world these are physical actions we converted it into geometry then that into symbol. We do all our calculations here and then come back and we are able to answer the question how do you make sure that this thing works? That's the task, okay? So let's start. First thing is we got to talk about forces. Now most of you have some vague idea of what the units are and this, that and the other but one of the things that I have found with my statics and dynamics class is people are notoriously bad at putting units. So if you are in my class and you don't put any units I will say thank you very much and give you a zero. It's like going to work and you get a new job in a fabulous place and they tell you your salary is a hundred thousand. You're looking there and saying hundred thousand what? I'm not going to tell you. So do you think you think you'll accept the job? No, you want to know whether you're going to be paid in dollars, whether you're going to be paid in rupees, whether you're going to be paid in rem remnimbi, whether you're going to be paid in pesos. What's going on, right? So in the same way. When you are going to talk about forces, I will not accept an answer which says force is 10,000. 10,000 donkeys? What are you talking about here? right? So please remember, units are important. But in order to figure out what these units are, we are going to start out with our basic unit of force which is a Newton. This is the SI system. In the FPS system, the typical unit of force is a pound and we will talk about that in a second. First thing is, a 1 kilogram mass 
in the SI system weighs about 10 newtons, 9.81. You can roughly approximate it over 10 newtons. Okay. One pound in the FPS system corresponds to about 4.45 newtons. In, so you can make it very precise, you know, more precise, but it's enough to think about it as about four and a half newtons. Okay. Now let's look at some common objects to figure out how much they weigh. So how much is one newton? Do you think it's a large unit or a small unit? Do you think it's a lot or it's a little bit? What do you think? Okay. One newton is about the weight of a small apple. So I want you to understand it's not a lot. It's a fairly small one. Okay. So the next up, our unit is about the weight of a person. A weight of a person, force of gravity on a person, uh, average person across the across the United States, I'm sorry, across the world is about 600 newtons. Average thing across the US is about 800 newtons. Okay. So roughly speaking, if you get answers are in the range of about 600 to 800 newtons, you are talking about the weight of one person. Fair, you know, you get the idea, right? Now, we'll think of something much larger, a car. A car ha is actually weighs about 11,000 newtons. That's about 11 kilonewtons, about 11 people equals one car. Okay, so you get a rough idea. Huh? So you get an idea of what the sizes are. And just to show you how strong steel really is. <coughs> imagine you had about one square inch of steel. A steel rod which is about one square inch diameter. You can see my hand now, that's about that much. That can carry 20 cars that can you can hang 20 Ford Fiestas out of that and you will be fine. You know, imagine that. So I want you to understand that a steel rod can take an enormous amount of force before it can feel. Okay, so that's a good idea for you to think about. But these three sizes are important for you to figure out whether your answer is reasonable or not. Human size, car size, apple size. Okay, apple size is about 1 newton, it's very small. Human size is about 800 newtons, that's reasonable. Car size is fairly on the large size. Okay, so you get an idea. Okay, very good. First up, first up, this is the core of what we are talking about. This is the idea that we can add forces. What do I mean by that? Imagine you have some object and there are three forces acting on it. You can remove the three forces and replace it with just one. This is the critical idea behind being able to convert forces into vectors. What do I mean by that? You, what you do is you can redraw the forces end to end. What do I mean by that? I want to be able to take this force and move it here. Take that force and move it there. So that's how I'm going to do. I'm going to show you how that works. There. I have taken this force and moved it there. Slowly this force has disappeared. What used to be here has moved there. And then I'm going to take that force and move it there. And the result of this motion is the net force on the object. There. So what you do is, you can replace all the three forces with just one force by doing this end-to-end -end vector business. This is what, uh, this is how it works. And for a long time, we were, you can do this entirely with drawing. You don't need anything. You can just draw this thing out. And that's one of the reasons why in an engineering class, typically they teach you drawing first because in the early days, everything was done with drawings. Okay, before calculators and things like that, right? But with the advent of calculators, you can do a lot more. This is very cumbersome to do in with drawings, but with the advent of calculators, you can do a lot more. And with vectors and calculators, you can really go to time. Okay, so that's the idea. Okay, so now we are at the heart of the symbolic world. And remember, we started out with people moving stuff, and we converted it into vectors, I mean drawings, and then now we are going to convert it into symbolic word. And the idea is that every force can be represented by two numbers in two dimensions and three numbers in 3D. So I am converting a force which is a physical feeling into numbers. But it is not just one number, it is three numbers. And the way to do that is due to René Descartes, 1596 to 1650, I already understand a long time ago. And not surprisingly, he, was, he, is, he is responsible for a lot of your math homework. Okay, So, the 
idea is that I take any force like that and replace it with two numbers. Okay. Now, what I want you to understand is my notation. This arrow, this kind of thing represents components of the forces and I am borrowing it directly from the from mathematics uh, text for vectors so that people are comfortable with it. And if I want to represent a force vector, I am going to put a, I'm going to put a F and with a line underneath it or a tilde or something like that. Okay. So, if you look like that, it is a force and here you can see the line there. Okay. That is our notation. Very good. The other person to remember is a very famous person by the name of J. W. Gibbs. Now, if you have taken a chemistry class already or something like that, you would have seen Gibbs in a chemistry in your in your chemistry class as doing lots of stuff with Gibbs potentials and chemist, chemical equilibrium and all of this. But I want you to understand that he was the first engineering PhD in the United States in 1863, and his PhD was on gears. So, he was a mechanical engineer. The American Physical Society kind of calls him a mathematical physicist, but that is horse manure. Okay, it really is uh, mechanical engineering. Okay, he invented modern vector calculus, vector analysis. Okay, not only that. He pioneered the use of vectors in physics and mechanics. So, I wanted to understand really he did everything. Beautiful, beautiful work. And all our stuff that we know about vectors and how we use them today come from him and another very famous electrical engineer by the name of Heaviside and they did a lot of this work. Okay. Uh, so, I wanted to understand look engineers have done a lot for this world. This is an example of what they have done. Very good. Now, we want to be able to convert pictures into vectors. So, the idea is that if you do Cartesian coordinates, there are two directions you have to know. East direction, that is this way and north direction, that is that way. East, north. And east is called I, north is called J. Okay. And I want to change colors because I want to do some stuff in red. So, there you go. Okay. If Now, I have shown you four vectors. And I want to make sure that we know how to get the components of the vectors, how to draw uh, these things. So, the first thing to do is to draw the east and north directions on each vector starting at its base. That is, don't put it here. That's bad move. Put it here. This is I. That's J. Okay. Next, you measure from the east direction counterclockwise this way that's the angle the length is f the angle is theta and then your vector will be f cos theta f sin theta so you have converted this picture into vectors now let's go to this picture second one this one first i go to the base and i'm going to put east north and then it says measure angles counterclockwise from the east direction so i'm going to start here i'm going to measure like that theta and then this will be this length is f so it will be f cos theta f sin theta i think hey wait a minute what about sines? You know, what about the fact that uh, the the f is in the second quadrant? The beauty of the royal root is your calculator will take care of what the signs are because of the way in which you are measuring angles. So, no worries about sine. Now, take the next two vectors and you draw it yourself. Pause this thing, draw it yourself, and then come back and see whether uh, you and I have the same answer. Did you pause it? Did you try it yourself? Now come back, let's see. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the base, I'm going to draw east, north, 
My angle is going to start from the positive east and it's going to go like that, theta. And then f cos theta, f sine theta. Now, how about that? You don't have to worry about third quarter and second quarter, nothing. Now, try the last one. Pause it, try it out, come back. Did you pause it? Did you try it out? Okay, now let's see what I got. That's what I got. And then that's all. If you keep positive counterclockwise directions and you do this thing, you will never go wrong. You will not make a sign mistake. Of course, there are shortcuts. As I said, look, if you are familiar with it, you know what to do with it. Just go ahead and just knock yourself out. Okay. But if you are not sure about it, this is a guaranteed way to get everything right. And the way we write this thing, instead of writing f cos theta, sometimes we will write f at theta. This is magnitude. This thing is angle, CCW angle from east. So, F at theta. So, that's our symbol. Many times instead of writing F cos theta, F sin theta, we will write it as F at theta and that's how we convert pictures into vectors. Very good.